Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 55. So hello and welcome to episode 55. This week, like last week, we're going to be making another ornament, or you can use it as a decoration um, anywhere in your home, not just on your tree. So we're just going to get right to it. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the things that you could use to make this ornament. Um, but this episode is going to be a little bit different because you can really use whatever materials you like from your stash. I'm going to give you some ideas, I'm going to show you a few techniques, and then you can really run with it however you want. Um, so the main thing you're going to want is a key. I'm using um, this large key. Um, I got it from an antique store near where I live. You could use a smaller key, of course. Um, you can find a variety of sizes of keys and then just adapt this to work however you like. And this is kind of like an old metal brass key. And like I said, you can use any key you like. Um, I'm using some brass wire because I feel like that will look the best. Um, you can use any wire you like. And I'm simply using 22 gauge wire um, that's really easy to use and flexible. Um, I am mainly using that because it's what I have on hand and this project is kind of what about all about what you have on hand um, but if you have a choice I would use 20 gauge half hard wire instead of this thinner wire. And then um, the tools you'll need are the normal tools, wire cutters, chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, um, you'll need bent nose pliers for certain parts too, so just kind of the normal tools you'll need. And then you can just kind of go through your stash of supplies and see what you can find. Um, so I'm going to be using buttons and I just grabbed a variety of green and red, kind of the traditional colors of the holidays. If you decorate with different colors, then go ahead and use whatever colors you like and just kind of go through your supplies. This is probably a good chance to use up some that you might have left over from other projects that you weren't sure what you're going to use for anyway. Um, so I have some buttons and like I said, I did grab more than I'll probably use. And then I have some beads. Um, these are some green and red beads. These are little hearts, which I thought would be cute. Um, then I have some larger recycled glass beads. And then, additionally, I have this um, string of um, crystals for a chandelier. And I thought I would like to incorporate a couple of those. You don't need a whole string. Um, maybe just a couple, maybe just one and then some lace, which will tie it all together. So the basic idea for this ornament is we're going to take this key, and I'm envisioning kind of like a collage of a bunch of um, beads and uh, buttons and some crystals, and maybe tie some lace up at top. So I'm going to show you how to kind of make a few be dangle and do a few other things so that you can come up with the components and then I'll show you how to put it all together. But you can use whatever materials you like. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, so I have my wire and I'm going to start off by taking a button and kind of making a charm out of it. So I'm just going to cut some wire. Um, and if you're Depending how big your button is, um, it will depend how long you need your wire, but mine's about five inches long. And my button's just about an inch. And so to make this into a charm, we're just going to thread the wire through one of the holes in the button and um, get it in the middle. And now I'm just crossing over the wires and making a twist. All right, and the clouds have suddenly, we had a bright and shiny day, sunny, and the clouds suddenly have come over, so there might be a little bit of variation in the light in the video, and I am sorry about that. 
All right, so now I have my round nose pliers. So we're just going to grab hold of one of these two wires here. And mine, if they're the same length, you can choose whichever one. Um, one of mine, I didn't do it quite evenly, and this one's a little bit longer. So if you have one that's a little longer, use that one. And then you just hold that wire in the middle of your round nose pliers and you wrap around the roundness pliers and then kind of in between where you made that twist and the pliers to form a loop. So you have a loop and mine doesn't look that great. Let me try that again. When you're working with wire that's just flexible, it's very easy to fix. And now I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers and we want to make sure we straighten out this loop on top of the button and I just move this other wire out of the way. And so how I do that is I, as I'm going around one time with that same wire that you wrapped around, you're going to go around one time and kind of straighten everything out. And you can switch hands and then you can either use your um, bent nose pliers to grab onto the wire and wrap around or if you're using really flexible wire and you have quite a bit of it like I do here. And you can just use your hand and just wrap around a few times and then you're going to grab that other wire and wrap around a few times with it as well and you're just going to go the way the wire wants you to go. Um, it will feel like it's going in one direction so go in that direction. So I'm just going to go around a few times and I go around a couple more times. Alright, and then you're just going to trim off any excess wire. And then just grab your chain nose pliers again and just make sure um, now the ends are poking out. And so for any um, buttons, this is the technique you'll use. So again, I'm just starting with some wire, just cutting off a, a few inches of it. Um, and I think for this technique, I'm going to actually make my own head pin. Um, and in this case, you might want to just use head pins already made. But I'm going to make a knotted head pin. Um, and I've shown you how to do this before. But you basically go about a third of the way and then bend your wire and then push it down so it's nice and flat so the wire is right next to each other and then you're just going to hold this tip with your uh, chain nose pliers um, and you're going to bend up the wire and now we're just going to hold that tip again with our chain nose pliers and you're just going to hold it as close to the end as you can Oops. and try to keep a hold of it better than I am and then you're just going to go ahead and wrap that wire around kind of in a messy manner so it looks like a knot and then just try to get down as far as you can to the tip and then any excess just clip off and then use your chain as pliers to make sure that end is not poking out. Um, this works really well if you have a thinner gauge wire like 22 gauge. Um, if you have, if you're using 20 gauge wire, you might want to make some other sort of head pin like a spiral or something like that. And you can go back and look at my other videos to see how to make other head pins. So now I'm just sliding on a bead and that knot holds the bead on the end and then I grab my round nose pliers and we're going to make this kind of into a charm as well. So it's similar to what I just showed you with the button. So you're going to wrap around the pliers with the wire and form a loop so the wire will go down um, in between the pliers and that bead. And then take the round nose pliers off and again you see this loop is not straight over the bead, we want it to be straight, so as I go around with this wire one time, I just sort of pull up and straighten out the loop. 
and then switching hands and then continue to wrap and again you could use your um, your button nose pliers to hold the wire if you're more comfortable or if it's just if you're just using 22 gauge wire and you have a bunch of wire to work with sometimes it's easier to choose your hands which is what I'm doing and you go around a few times till you're happy and trim off the excess wire and you grab your chain nose pliers again and make sure that end is not poking out And so that's a bead dangle. So we'll make a few of those as well. And you just use the same technique. And then I just wanted to show you too. Um, I'm going to use a crystal. And they usually come, I don't know, sometimes you find them loose and sometimes you find them in a chain like this. So you don't want to use um, the little wire that it comes on. You want to use your own. So um, these are split rings. So it's just a little tricky finding the opening and then pulling that off and then doing the same with the other side. And then you'll just make do the same thing with a, the crystal and it basically works the same way as with the button. Um, you just cut off some wire. This has two holes. We're going to ignore one or you could use both and make kind of like a little you know, another chain that you would hang off your key. Um, so you just do exactly the same way. I'm not going to go through it again, but you just make a twist and then use your round nose pliers again to make a loop. So that's the, the basic idea. So I decided I wanted to make a chain of two crystals. So I just wanted to kind of show you. Um, I have made a loop on each side of this crystal and now I'm going to make a loop on this one and I'll kind of show you how to attach them together um, not using jump rings I'm just gonna loop them together so you start out the same way you thread the crystal through you um, make that t first initial twist and now you make your loop with your round nose pliers and I'm just going to straighten this loop out and then you just slide this crystal on and into that loop and now you just sort of proceed as if that crystal that you just put in the loop isn't even there so it's there it's just hanging off to the side and just complete the wraps and then you have a chain and then you can just kind of repeat that for however many you'd like in a row so I'll just turn off the excess here finishing up this wire wrapped loop and it should enter in and then you can kind of just look at your key and see how far down it will hang and if you might not even want to use two but if you do want to use two or if you have an even larger key maybe you want a third one so that's just kind of how I decided to do two so these are going to be the main components um, I'm going to make a few more button charms and a few more bead dangles and then I'll show you how to put it all together. All right, so I have all my little charms I'm going to use. I have about five buttons. I have a, two crystals that are attached to each other and four bead dangles, but you may have um, a variety of different sizes. Now I'm going to grab my wire again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off about two feet or so. And my Tangled up here, so let me get that untangled. And slide this over a little bit. And I'm grabbing my key at this point. So um, now we're going to start attaching all of, all of our little charms onto the key. Alright, so to start, we're going to get the wire started around um, kind of the 
top part of the key on the on the kind of whatever you call this, I guess like the shank part of the key, but all the way up at the top um, next to this round part. So we're just going to wrap around a few times to make sure it's secure. And then just you might want to just hold the shorter end that was the loose end and then wrap over it as you're going around a few times. Okay. Now I'm going to just start adding charms with the loop and then wrapping around a few times. So I'm going to start with this crystal um, strand here and I'm sliding it onto the wire and then I just want to try to get it lined up where I want it to be and you may have to, um, the loop you made, um, it may not, you may have made it in the wrong direction so you can, it's very easy to just flip it around so that whatever you're putting on lays right. So I'm just going to add that on and then I'm going to go around a couple of times and for some reason I feel like I'm wrapping backwards. I guess I could just flip the key over. <laughs> there we go. Alright. And now we're just going to work our way down. And actually you might want to put things on top of each other as well. So what I mean by that is um, I was going to wrap under this crystal but instead I'm staying on top and now I'm just going to add a small bead. So I'm just sliding it on the end here, dropping it down. And then you just kind of hold it where you want it to be, and then wrap around. And then you might want to add a couple buttons. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add two buttons here, a red one and a green one. Slide that onto the wire. And just sort of, you gotta kind of just hold them in place while you wrap the, you know, the larger wire around the key. Or they just sort of slip slide all over the place. Which, you know, can be fine too, really. Alright. And now I'm going to add a bead. So I'm sliding that on. And you can add, you know, two things at once or one thing. However you want to do it. And I'm just kind of going underneath with the wire um, underneath this, the crystal. But now I'm going to go over top and add uh, one of these buttons. Oops. And if your things have two sides, like these green buttons of mine do, then you want to make sure you're putting them on right side up. Maybe pull it over to the side a little. All right, and then just continue doing that until you have everything added that you want. Okay, now when you have everything on there that you want on there, um, we're going to just sort of end this wire. So you can just kind of go back up through. And I'm going to grab my bent nose pliers and go up here. In between everything <laughs> carefully and then just sort of pull tightly and end and if you have a little spot poking up you can just turn that off all right and then uh, you can kind of go through and just make sure things are where you want them to be and it's not just some big hot mess um, and you might just want it to be kind of a big bunch of beads and buttons and stuff because that's kind of what I was looking for so but just make sure everything's kind of where you want it to be and not just a mess all right and now 
I have my lace. So I'm going to actually tie a bow up here on the top. You could use any ribbon you have, really. Or you don't even need to add this part, really, if you don't want to. I think that's cute. Maybe make it a little smaller. And then you can, if you want to use it as an ornament on your tree, you can put one of those hooks on or you can just add another piece of lace and hang it that way. Or you can really hang it anywhere you want. Um, this would be cute as, you know, when it's like the magic Santa's key you see if you have small children or... Um, it's a cute idea for a gift even, maybe somebody who just bought their first house or something like that. So um, that is the key ornament and I hope you enjoyed that. And I will be back in a couple of weeks with a brand new episode. I hope you have a very merry holiday or had one depending on what you celebrate. And I will be back soon with a new tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make that ornament and you picked up a few techniques along the way maybe you can use in other pieces of jewelry as well. I wanted to let you know that over at my website I have a step-by-step -step photo instruction um, blog post for this episode. Um, the link will be below if you're watching this on YouTube and if you sign up for my newsletter you'll get future episodes of ECT TV in PDF form as well. When they're published I make a PDF and and send it out to my newsletter subscribers. So make sure you sign up. Starting on January 4th, I my popular creativity class, Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry e-course, is starting again. Um, it's six creative weeks of creativity boosters, which are just exercises, activities to make you feel more creative. You get jewelry making lessons and then you also get jewelry projects. There's 18 total in the class. Um, but you'll be feeling so creative, you'll be designing your own jewelry in no time. You can get signed up for that or I have a bundle with Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry and my brand new Inspired e-course which is an art journaling slash jewelry making e-course so you'll get prompts for art journals and then we'll be translating those art journal entries into jewelry making. You can bundle them together because I'm going to run them one right after the, the other, January and then in February. Um, so come on over to my website to learn more about those two e-courses and get signed up. I will see you in a couple of weeks.